Hello and welcome to this edition of Please Note. I'm going to introduce all of these guys and we're going to talk about what they do in a few moments, but I want to take this moment to introduce Amy Campbell, who is now one of our three diocesan youth missioners. And Amy is going to be doing what uh, Beth and Lisa are going to be doing, but I want Amy to tell a little story because she's about to um, actually go to one of our congregations. And what is it you're going to do? And this will tell you what youth ministry integrated and part of the whole is beginning to look like. What are you going to be doing, Amy? Well, Bishop Curry, I recently had a conversation with uh, Father Lawrence from St. Anne's Winston-Salem, and we talked a lot about the shift of youth ministry, children's ministry, and how it's up to date has been very segmented, and how we really want to come to a, um, an organic movement to um, ministry that is focused more on the family, Focus more on sharing amongst the congregation with um, intergenerational um, mm -hmm. opportunities and ideas. Once upon a time, we used to have the one-room schoolhouse, and we thought we had to be really sophisticated and have mm -hmm. this class over here and that class over here and this age over here. And we realized there were actually was some virtue in that one-room schoolhouse, intergenerational. Um, multidisciplinary. When you were at St. Christopher's High Point, you kind of were doing some of that. Yeah, we would gather first thing before our Sunday school started. We would have um, adults, youth, children, nursery kids come in. We would do a song together and have mm -hmm. a prayer. Um, we would split out into some different age sure. groups, um, you know, depending on really year to year what our makeup was and, mm -hmm. and how our, you know, how we wanted to align our programs. But it was, um, it's wonderful to see some of the older children children shepherd the younger children and some of them had, have even become like you know big brother big sister types and they really look up to them. That model and that approach may well be the approach of the future. It may be that the small churches in a creative way are showing us the way. Beth and Lisa have been part of the youth department and continue and we're so glad and delighted and they're going to be doing this kind of thing so you guys are actually going to be hitting the road as well. That's correct. Uh, modeling very much after what the canons have been working with uh, the past couple of years. We sit down and we share together what churches are we going to visit, what programs do we have, and we're all three working together on all the different programs. So uh, we met this morning and Amy, Amy talked with us about visiting or talking with Father Lawrence and uh, Lisa's got projects going on with other parishes and I've got three meetings coming up. So we work together to try to meet the needs of the congregations as well as planning the diocesan events. Now you guys will be traveling all over the diocese. You actually live in Wilson, don't you? Just about. <laughs> it's near Wilson. Yes. <laughs> in the neighborhood of Wilson. Yes. Yes. So, and, and you're in Raleigh. Mm -hmm. And you're in High, High Point. Point. Mm -hmm. Accessing all areas of the diocese. We are, and um, we each bring something new and fresh to the table. So um, wherever our gifts are and whatever the parishes need um, may require me in Charlotte or <laughs> Amy in Rocky Mount or wherever. So yeah. we are kind of crossing the diocese and not just staying in our particular areas. Awesome. This kind of, I mean, I think Amy used the word organic, almost holistic, maybe overused, but, but this approach, this is a new, this is sort of one of those things everything old is new again. Um, this is uh, a new but old approach, and say a little bit more about the philosophy, theology behind it. That's right, Bishop, and, and we've been working over the last few years trying to have a diocesan staff that exists to help support and nurture the life of the congregations. We understand that we're not the experts with all the answers, but rather there are lots of experts in the congregations who have figured out how to do something really well. And a lot of what we can do as diocesan staff is connect those points of the network together so that everybody has the benefit of all the wisdom and learning that's going on in all the congregations. And so we really are seeing this as a theological shift from a kind of hierarchy where the power and the experts are in Dawson House in Raleigh mm -hmm. to an understanding that we are the body of Christ and each point of the body of Christ is doing the ministry of Christ and the role of the Dawson staff is to be kind of like the circulatory system that connects it all together and make sure that the lifeblood of the diocese mm -hmm. is flowing. And part of this um, includes, for example, um, involvement in what we used to call Christian education. Uh, but right. you guys are involved in what we now call Christian formation. Mm -hmm. um, not just youth work over here, Christian education over here, teenagers here, junior highs here. This is much more integrated. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that in School of Ministry, 
Aleph Mumford and, and what they're doing over there is being connected to young adult ministry, is being connected to what we used to call youth ministry, that now may be family ministry and includes elementary school. So that lifelong Christian formation thing is something we're trying to link up within the staff as congregations are doing the same thing. What this conversation represents is the church moving in the direction of really taking our young people seriously as followers and disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ and how we can form them in that way. And I thank you guys for this. Thank you. All of this information and resources will be included in this edition of Flea's Note. So God bless you and keep the faith.